question is from Chase Mancia. One, if my diet isn't super dialed in, for example, not getting enough protein, it feels like the gym isn't worth it. Should I still make a point to go? Yeah, totally. You should definitely. Yeah, always worth it. Yeah, that's the all or nothing mentality, yeah. which prevents more people from not doing anything than I can think of. I used definitely. I used to do this though. Mm. I, I I mean I have to admit this. This is this was um, my mo as even as a trainer. Um, I used to have this attitude of like, ah, if I'm not dialed nutritionally, then why? And a, a lot of that came from because I, I I knew how quick I could change my physique when I dialed everything in. If my nutrition was on point, I was training really well, I could really alter my physique. And so I kind of had this attitude of all or nothing. Either I'm in it all the way, and if I'm not, then I'm doing other things. And for me, it was okay. I was managing my quote unquote health because if I wasn't training, I was playing basketball. I was snowboarding. I was wakeboarding. So you're like I'm active. I was active. Right. And so I just wasn't focused on building my aesthetics. And so I would justify this uh, diet's whack. I'm not lifting weights right now. I don't care because I'm not really going to build the maximum amount of muscle. I'm not going to sculpt my physique the way I want. I'm playing sports. I'm doing these things. And so I, now that I'm older, it's totally different. I have the complete opposite approach that something is better than nothing always. And sometimes, even if my diet is whack, just coming in and getting a good squat session in and knowing like the benefits of keeping my hips strong and mobile, keeping working on the mobility work that I'm trying to do, keep practicing that movement that is that technical and trying to improve it. There's so many other benefits other than am I building the most amount of muscle possible because my diet is or is not in check? Yeah, it's like, um, I mean, you can think about it a couple different ways. One way is, okay, if my diet's bad, um, not exercising is making everything worse. So I'm just making a bad situation much worse by now not being uh, active. The second way you can look at it is this. Look, when you exercise appropriately, you don't have to change your diet at all you're still sending a signal that says build muscle. You're still positively influencing your metabolism and your hormones and your health just by working out. Now, of course, it's ideal to have a great diet with a great exercise plan. Of course, that's ideal. But not doing one does not completely negate the benefits of the other. Uh, it's they're, 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 they're best together, but they're also good alone. That's the bottom line. I, I'll tell you what, the vast majority of my clients that I trained – towards the back half of my career when I became a really, really effective trainer were, was just like this for a long time. Well, they yes. would come see me. They would train with me two or three days a week. That's what you had to work with. And they didn't fix their diet because the diet was the hardest part. It always is. Yeah. And I didn't hammer them like I did early on because I knew it was a slow process. So I'd be training people for a year, two years, three years without them dialing in diet at all. All we're doing is exercising. And here's what happened during that two-year period of me working them out. They got stronger, they got, healthier, hormones balanced. Yeah, all they can move out. better. They yeah. felt better. And all of that actually contributes significantly to then starting to eat better later on. Yeah. So then little by little, they naturally wanted to change their diet because they just felt better yeah. from the exercise. And all of them became permanent with their approach to exercise and nutrition. This attitude of if I'm not doing if I'm not doing one I'm not doing the other one is the all or nothing approach and yeah. it's all that's literally what your whole routine is going to look like it's either all or nothing yeah whichever one comes naturally easy that, that that's a healthy habit that you're already doing I mean keep going with that I, I've actually met uh, one of my clients was really you know dialed in nutritionally but just was not into the movement side of it and that was like I'm like great like let's keep like fashioning in on that and we'll keep building like very slowly and get you comfortable with, you know, because wasn't very familiar with the fact that, you know, there was a burn element to it. You know, there was these other components like she wasn't very familiar with. But, uh, you know, again, like you don't want to you don't want to squash any momentum going in the right direction, I think. No, no. And it, this reminds me, too, when I would uh, train salespeople uh, back in the day and they'd say things to me like, uh, well, what's the use if I go out and talk to those people over there? They don't look like they're interested or I'm not super well versed yet or whatever. And the thing that I would say to them is you have you going out and talking to people is is your, the percentage that, that you'll succeed is ho much higher than you not doing anything. You sitting here it's 100% you're not going to get any new sales or new leads. You going out there even if you suck and most of the people you talk to are not interested, it's more than zero. Your percent increase is more than zero. So if everything's shitty mm -hmm. and you're exercising, it's better than if you weren't. 
So definitely do something. And in fact, that's the long-term approach to health and fitness. The long-term approach that is successful, that I've always seen to be far more successful, is taking exactly that type of an approach. Right. Something yeah. is better than A nothing. A bird in the hand, better than two in the bush. Boom. Yeah. Old school.